Together with Dennis Kara, we teach the Word of God, which we believe is absolute truth. Normally, that's the procedure that we follow on this program, but we found that so many people have been convinced that the Word of God is not true uh, from science that we find it appropriate to look at the scientific evidence, which likewise supports our faith in the Word of God. I'm trained in geology, and I think that's, an especial, that's a special threat to faith. It's a challenge in many ways that is often what's taught from geology. And so we're looking at that scientific evidence, and we hope you'll consider that with us this morning. We began last time with a consideration of what we call the record of the rocks, and that may be a little bit too broad. We're talking about the record of the sedimentary rocks, the rocks laid down by water that cover the continents to an average of about a mile and a half with billions and billions of dead things on it. Now, what in the world would have caused rocks laid down by water with billions and billions of dead things on it to cover the continents to an average depth of a mile and a half? Well, <clears throat> I think a flood is a good explanation for that. And when we see that very thing, minus the fossils, on Mars, then that's their conclusion. And we documented that last time. That's where there's virtually no water and none today. But today where we have uh, the Earth's surface covered 70 <laughs> percent by about three miles of water. Uh, plenty of water. Uh, no, no, it couldn't be a flood. It's a gradual, slow process of evolution that produced that. Well, you don't find the evolutionary sequence, the geologic column, precisely as you find it in the textbooks. It's pieced together from various localities supposed to represent an evolutionary sequence, though the leading authorities will deny that those evolutionary sequences in the rocks have been found. And we documented that last time. But how do you test this column which represents the evolutionary thought process? Well, uh, Stephen Stanley of Johns Hopkins said topsy-turvy fossils would test it. Things supposed to be found up, found down. Things supposed to be found down, found up. Well, we find lots of things that are supposed to be down that are found up that are still alive that were down at the bottom of the column. Well, those living fossils, uh, there are so many of them, they just kind of look the other way and ignore, I think, the obvious logic involved that this would be very negative to their view. But the real test is not the top sea fossils, but the turvy fossils, the ones that are supposed to be down that are found up. They hadn't evolved yet. How could they be up? Uh, the thought is expressed by Richard Dawkins and the implications clearly acknowledged in Newsweek several years ago. Evolution could be so easily disproved. Here, here's the test. If just a single fossil turned up in the wrong date order, now that would include topsy and turfy, but he's really talking about things down found up. Even a single fossil in the wrong geologic stratum would do it. Well, we found that. For example, uh, near Moab, Utah, at LaSalle, perfectly modern human skeletons uh, replaced by malachite that are <laughs> in the same layer with the dinosaurs. Now, that's supposed to be 100 million years apart, or at least 65 million. Uh, and so we have a whole new set of objections. Uh, this is an intrusional burial. They fell down a crack. This is a mine cave in. Well, we considered those objections and saw that none of those work. We've got 11 skeletons, Four of them are from females. One of them is an infant, no bones broken, just washed into place and replaced with malachite. Uh, it doesn't sound like a mine cave in. Their uh, intrusional burial is just purely ad hoc. That is, they assume that to be the case. Uh, it's in the Dakota sandstone, 50 feet down, uh, in this sandstone, supposed to be 140 million years old, 
and we see fossils like this. Now this is together, most of them are not articulated, that is, as in life, but this is. And at the lower left-hand corner, you see the foot, the top, you see the knee and the hip over on the right. Uh, these are just piled into place, may appear to be articulated, but are not, just piles of bones. Some of them are just beautifully preserved. This jawbone is turquoise grade, <laughs> that is jewelry grade turquoise, uh, beautiful, completely replaced, certainly not a recent burial. This bone I had just taken out of the rock, washed it off with my canteen, and it's a bright green replaced with malachite, and most of them are. There's no collagen in the bones, uh, which usually takes at least a thousand years to degrade. This is a perfect turvy fossil, and as Dawkins acknowledged, evolution would be utterly destroyed if you find one like this. Well, when you do find one like this, it's an intrusional burial, they uh, crawl back in a cave, it collapsed, a mine came. All kind of unproven, assumed, uh, out of the blue <laughs> objections that are not what it looks like. Utterly disproved, he says. In the same article, he continues talking about another test. He says, ironically, it's also the reason why creationists are so keen on the fake human footprints which were carved during the Depression to fool tourists in the dinosaur beds of Texas. Now, uh, Dr. Dawkins has never been to Texas. He's, we've invited him to come look at the footprints. He won't do that. He's sure, that, and they have to be fake because humans and dinosaurs didn't live together. That's his assumption, and he won't consider an alternative. But the reason why this is really a good test is that footprints can't be intrusionally buried, can't they? You can assume that without evidence for the bones uh, that we just looked at, but you can't erode footprints and then redeposit them, can you? In Dinosaur Valley State Park uh, near Glen Rose, Texas, we have the Paluxy River that flows down through layers that have dinosaur prints in them, uh, famous for the dinosaur prints and uh, very dramatic. They were found back in the 40s uh, by Roland T. Bird. Uh, really a great place to take a vacation and look at dinosaur tracks in the Dinosaur Valley State Park. Some of them are raised. This uh, causes us to scratch our head a little bit. Prints are supposed to be depressed. This is raised, but what we're looking at here is infill that's harder than the matrix that surrounds it. And so as it erodes down, it exposes that hardened infill and it becomes raised. Uh, that'll become important when we look at some other evidence later. But footprints like this uh, are throughout the area. I know what that looks like together with the very famous dinosaur tracks. Well, that has to be carved. The idea was tested by Stan Taylor back in the early 70s when he used a backhoe with rubber tires to move the river bank back to see if the footprints continued, and they did. In a sequence he uncovered of 12, we've extended that to two more, to 14, in a right-left pattern. Uh, with the mud push-up around it, you can see very obviously the human shape, and some of them are extremely detailed. This one, I think, is very dramatic. You have to look at it closely. When you show the highlighted area, you see the dinosaur track that's about 25 inches, but then within it, all five toes and instep and heel of a human track in a sequence of 14 in a right-left pattern. Now, that was so disconcerting to one of the evolutionists uh, from Texas that he decided that, well, actually it was from Cleveland at the time, came down to uh, destroy it and did. It was seen in the river with an iron pole and here's the way it looked when he finished with it. Uh, of course, we have excellent pictures, stereo photographs, cast made, it's well documented. But ahead of it, you see another track, looks like this. Uh, the four part, 
uh, anterior is uh, the, shows the three dinosaur toes in the back of it. Looks like somebody stepped in this infill material. Looking at it from a side view, that's just a very obvious explanation. You put a human foot in it and you feel that molded shape. You see the toes with the human foot, it fits. Uh, I was trying to play the devil's advocate. What could, you know, could this be erosion? Well, if we have a right-left pattern, that's not the way erosion works, is it? This one is a right. Directly ahead of it is a left. Right-left consistently. Uh, two of them you can't really tell, but of the 14, they all fit the sequence. Looking at this print from a side view, you see the longer, almost 25-inch dinosaur track and beside it and completely outside the dinosaur track. In this instance, sometimes they're across, sometimes ahead and behind. But here, completely beside, you have the human track that is consistent in length and consistent in order, right, left, right, left. Now, this provides really powerful evidence that you can't erode and redeposit. We analyzed it like this. All of them have at least a human shape, as we see in the second column, 14 out of 14. The length of the human shape is uh, pretty consistent. Toes, you can see in at least seven of the 14. Right from left, you can distinguish in 12 of the 14. In fact, we did a test at Kansas State University in the psych department asking the students First, with life-size pictures, not telling them anything about it, what is this? Well, 97% said, these are human footprints. Then, then we got rough on them. We said, now tell us right from left. And it was uh, 70 uh, or 87% correlation. The two that we can't tell, of course, they uh, did not get right <laughs> in uh, in most of the instances, or in many of the instances, but uh, it correlated just as was predicted, right, left, right, left, 12 of the 14. And then it's consistent. Nothing is consistently out of order. Now, this is the way you do science. Dawkins sits back behind his desk at Oxford and says, this can't be, they're fake. And we look at it and say, this is really good evidence with uh, some of the tracks, all five toes, instep, heel. Um, this, this is pretty hard to answer. Well, maybe erosion can do that. And you see the old man in the mountain sometimes that eh, happens as a result of erosion. I saw a picture just recently of this old man in the mountain in Turkey. This is south, southern Turkey. And uh, some have said that looks like President Trump. Well, it kind of looks like that, and we think, okay, erosion can do that. But if you saw one right beside it that looked like Obama, you would have some serious questions, wouldn't you? When you see four presidents, uh, four faces in the mountain that look like presidents, then you got a real good <laughs> impression. The, the, this was not erosion. This was carved. Not four, but 14 in a right-left pattern. Uh, provide really powerful evidence. This is just a perfect turvy fossil. Uh, it can't be intrusional because you can't do that with footprints, erode and redeposit. It's not carved. It was excavated from under the overburden, and there's further evidence of that, as we'll see. And it's not erosion. It's in a right-left pattern. I presented this at a state university up in uh, Tennessee, about 50 grad students, uh, head of the department there, and then opened for questions. The grad students all looked at the professor, what are you gonna say? He said, well, we don't know that there weren't dinosaurs back there with human feet. And I thought, wow. <laughs> but that's actually true, you don't know that. You also don't know that there weren't humans back there with dinosaur feet. Wouldn't that make about as much sense, I ask? Wouldn't it be more reasonable to say these things that look like dinosaur feet were made by dinosaurs? These things look like human feet were made by humans. 
No, no, he wouldn't admit that. And then I said, well, if they were human feet, would they look any different? And then he got up and left. That was the end of that discussion. <laughs> we had uh, <laughs> dinosaurs with human feet, their explanation. Uh, a friend of mine who was curator of the, Ameri uh, the Dallas Museum of Natural History came down, wanted to display one of the dinosaurs that we'd excavated. And we made him look at the tracks. He looked and got mad and left. Uh, came back a second time about a month later and was still not real happy. And we made him look again, ask him what this could be, and he left. Third time, I mean, he really wanted the dinosaur to display. Uh, he said, Dr. Patton, I have the answer. I've, I can tell you exactly what this is supposed to uh, the explanation for this. It looks like human feet together with a dinosaur. He says, I think they were made by aliens. And he was dead serious, and I kind of snickered, and he got mad. I said, well, Chuck, if they're made by aliens, uh, wouldn't that mean they came from a galaxy far, far away? Uh, it probably indicate they're more intelligent than we are. Uh, what are they doing running around barefooted? <laughs> and he got mad and left. Uh, aliens, dinosaurs with human feet, you just imagine anything to get around the obvious implications. Scientists are supposed to go with the facts. Well, no, this is not the way it is. We know there were at least 65 million years apart, could not be humans in time. And so whatever explanation is necessary, you stand on your head, you call them uh, alien footprints or dinosaurs with human feet or Maybe they're alien dinosaurs with human feet. You, as long as you're imagining, you can come up with anything you want to. Science is about what you see, and maybe it's what it looks like. That's the way honest scientists do science, I believe. And it's just really fun uh, to be a creationist sometimes and go with the facts. Uh, some suggested you needed more evidence, which is what you say when you can't say anything else. And so we continued, and actually with the drought in 2000, we continued this excavation of dinosaur tracks in that site and uncovered the longest consecutive dinosaur trail on the American continent. You can see maybe the little arrow here going around the corner. It's still not the end of this trail, but 156 consecutive dinosaur tracks that are just absolutely spectacular. See the claws at the end? I think they're the, the, the best and uh, is the longest on the North American continent. Uh, well, <laughs> we know what dinosaur tracks look like. We excavated the longest trail there. The ones going across it are not dinosaur tracks. Well, then they said, yeah, you need more evidence. And so we continued. Ahead of the fellow standing there at the end of that trail, looked like human tracks, is another platform, and we excavated down, uncovered that, and sure enough, another trail, this time 15, in a right-left pattern, continued. Looking at the middle of that trail, we see on the left, uh, somewhat raised, again, that phenomenon we considered earlier, uh, duck build or duck-like uh, dinosaur track, a different type dinosaur. We see the same thing on the right, but then something stepped in the one on the right. Wow, looking at a close-up of that, uh, we see this. Here's the, the raised duck-like dinosaur track, but then the human track within it. You can see, again, all five toes, and you can actually see the knuckles in the toes. Clear instep. Uh, all in a sequence in a right-left pattern. Now, this is powerful evidence, but of course that had to be erosion, it had to be carved. Uh, then in 2000, we found this amazing uh, track. Uh, this is Elvis Delk that actually found it. Didn't see the human track initially, it was covered with mud. Finally, actually, a couple of years later, uncovered and then saw here's a human track right with it. Well, that looks so good that that has to be carved. 
And so how do you distinguish between what's carved and what's natural? Well, we used a CAT scan to do virtual slices through the rock. And sometimes looking down under the rock, you can see clear indications of whether or not it's carved. Here is the virtual slice, and you see the slice indicated here by the line. The dinosaur toe corresponds exactly to what we see in the track, and the human toe is likewise clearly indicated. The line goes right through it, and under that human toe in this virtual slice, you see the following contours down in the rock. Now, what does that say about the idea this was carved? No, this was original impression in the sediment, and the virtual slice shows it beyond any shadow of a doubt. It was not carved. That which was too good to be true really is a, a human and a dinosaur right together in the same rock. We find evidence like this around the world. Uh, we'll have to continue into next week to look at a good deal of the evidence, but we'll look at another few examples of the coexistence of humans and dinosaurs clearly indicated by the evidence. Out in Natural Bridges National Monument, uh, the Four Corners area near Blanding, Utah, you see this natural bridge, and under that bridge, you see the people down at the bottom pointing up to the uh, Anasazi drawings that are under the arch up on the wall, and here I am beside one of them, uh, and wow, there's a dot. Now, we highlighted it because the red color is the desert varnish that forms over a, at least a thousand years, gradually building up and uh, somewhat obscures it, but you can still see it pretty clearly together with the snakes and the uh, shaman, the medicine men, uh, and we find a number of others in other places as well. Uh, but looking at that again, let's see if we can get that to show up, the highlighted area, uh, they're not drawing that sort of thing if they don't see dinosaurs. Uh, we travel down to Peru, and there we find some amazing evidence as well. Dr. Javier Cabrera was one of the more famous scientists in Peru, he performed the first heart transplant in Peru. He was head of the medical department at the University of Lima for 20 years, um, and then retired to be cultural anthropologist, the area of Inca. His father had, began, uh, had begun collecting uh, burial stones from the Inca tombs back in the 30s and 40s, and Dr. Cabrera continued that. Now, he passed away in 2002, but he continued to uh, investigate uh, the tombs and find burial stones in them and collect them. Others would bring them to him, but here we see one that is in place, in situ, in the tomb that I photographed. Uh, we were able to do some excavating there in the tombs. Uh, in the desert, you see perfect preservation of the textiles, the, the flesh parts in some instances, but these burial stones in the tombs depict various stories, and he collected 11,000 of these stones. Uh, this is one of the more dramatic ones, uh, a very obvious Diplodocus-like dinosaur. This one has dermal frills, that is, the little stair steps across the back. We didn't know about that until 1992 when they were first uh, found in a, in a beautiful fossil. We thought they looked like the Sinclair dinosaur, and when Mr. Sinclair made his sign, he didn't know about the dermal frills on the back, but they looked like his dinosaur with the stair steps. They knew about them over 2,000 years ago down in Nazca. Uh, some of them are large, very large stones. Some of them are small. A variety of materials and styles of the artist work. Uh, looking closely, the upper right-hand corner, you can see the dinosaur with the human in his foot, uh, shades of Jurassic Park. Some of them are extremely clear. Uh, 
Some of them are rather cartoonish, some of them rather artistic, but a tremendous variety. Uh, this one I have in my museum. It has three dinosaurs on it, uh, a little bit different style, raised instead of uh, depressed uh, carvings. But these stones continue to be excavated. This was excavated four years after Dr. Cabrera died, along with a number of others since then. If humans were drawing pictures of dinosaurs 2,000 years ago on the burial stones, uh, the idea they're 65 million years apart just doesn't work too well. We look at our first efforts to restore the bones that we found back in the early 1800s, uh, they didn't look much like dinosaurs, and we got a lot of that very wrong. We see burial cloths in the tombs with them, depicting this dinosaur motif. Uh, also, the pottery likewise shows that motif. These people were seeing, and this is an excellent example of a turvy fossil. This is positive evidence. Uh, we're going to continue to look at more and uh, wind up this section on the record of the rocks, uh, Lord willing, next session. But uh, we've got lots of turvy fossils that according to Dawkins and others, uh, just people who will think this can't be millions of years apart if we find them together. If we believe in creation uh, in six days, that's not a problem. We have good evidence that the Word of God is true. We thank you for tuning in this morning.